You heard what uh, David had to say there. What's your response to that accusation? And to be honest, he's not the first one to make it. You know, today is the international day for the prevention of the crime of genocide, and it's a timely reminder of why Israel is fighting this war. Because on October 7th, Hamas committed an act of genocide against the Israeli people. It invaded with its death squads, and they had a mission to burn, behead, butcher, mutilate, torture, rape, and abduct as many Israelis as they could, and as brutally as they could. And they did that with Nazi-like cruelty, Nazi-like efficiency, and out of a Nazi-like ideology that seeks the extermination of every man, woman, child in our country, and every Jew in the world. And after Hamas retreated back into the Gaza Strip with 250 hostages having brutally murdered 1,200 people, the first thing it did was to threaten us that it wants to do it mm. all over again. And so Israel's campaign now is not only to defend ourselves from the October 7th massacre, it's to defend ourselves from the threat of repeat October 7th mm. massacres by a brutal army of terror that has made open its yeah. genocidal goals against our people. But are you doing that effectively? Are you securing Israel's future when that means that in the process of trying to take out Hamas, you are killing, your airstrikes are killing, you know, what is it, 15,000, 14,000 civilians? 70% of them women and children. These are numbers not contested by your close friends in Washington. But they say the numbers are probably a bit higher because there are thousands of people dead under the rubble. Are you securing your security by doing that? Those are numbers that are being given to you by Hamas. The same they are terror not contested by the Americans. Let's, they let's, let's not contested. play that game no, they, again. They, They're not no, contested no, they by are, the administration. They are contested They're not. Because Hamas tries to pass all of them off as civilians. No. And we know They're not that all of them. Not all of, of them. Not all of them. Terrorists. Sorry. No, not all let's, of them. Let's, let's, no, not all of them. Let's Matt. not have an argument about numbers here. You're correct. The numbers, we are talking about thousands of civilians that have been killed, right? Your friends in Washington are saying they believe that those numbers are correct. Right. So let's just um, the, the question is philosophical, really, for a change. Do you honestly believe that by doing this, you are securing your interest in the long term? Right. Because even Lloyd Austin, the secretary of defense in Washington, has said strategically what you are doing is a mistake. Matt, the alternative to a campaign to destroy Hamas in response to the October 7th massacre is to leave Hamas in power with 137 hostages while it is threatening us that it wants to do the same massacre it has shown us that it has the capabilities to do. Now, every civilian death is a tragedy, Matt. Every civilian death. And civilian deaths are a tragic consequence of every war. And they are a tragic consequence But they're consequence not an inevitable consequence, are they? I mean, the, the, even, uh, again, well, I, Matt, I'm, I'm, I'm quoting the Americans. Anthony Blinken, history. the Secretary of State, has, has said very openly, you are not doing enough to live up to your precept, you know, to your pledge of trying to save as many civilian lives as possible. Quite the opposite. This is, this is not me saying this. This is your friends in Washington saying it. Are you going to ignore them? Matt, I'm not aware of any war in human history that has not seen civilian fatalities. And there are civilian fatalities in this war, too, that Hamas began, that we didn't want, that we didn't start, that we didn't even expect but that we have no choice but to fight and to win because the consequences of inaction would be that Hamas can massacre our people again. Now, as we do that, and we fight a counter-terrorism war in urban areas, we are taking steps unprecedented in the history of warfare to keep civilians safe. We are taking steps that the United States and the United Kingdom did not take when they fought ISIS. I'll give you one example. After we completed the encirclement of Gaza City, our soldiers secured a humanitarian corridor. I saw your own Channel 4 report mm. about this yeah. for Palestinians to be able to leave south. Now, during the war against ISIS, when 86 nations, including the United Kingdom, ganged together and decided that this army of terror can no longer be allowed to control territory from which to direct attacks against the West, I don't recall British troops being on the ground in Raqqa and Mosul, providing safe passage for Syrians and Iraqis while ISIS was firing RPGs at them. But that is what our soldiers mm. are doing. And we expect that when the fog of war clears, 
and we find out what the real civilian to casualty ratio is, and you compare it to other counterterrorism wars in urban areas, because that is the standard against which this must be judged in its proper context, that ratio will show very okay. clearly the lengths that the Israeli army has gone to to protect civilians. And it's a sad fact, Matt, that everyone who has been killed since October 7th would still be alive if Hamas had not launched this war. Indeed. And no one and else would be killed that, and, you if know, Hamas I, I, I spent five weeks in Israel, Elon, and I went to more funerals than I can remember, and I've talked to more hostage families than I, I plan to, and my heart was broken every single time. I feel, yeah. I genuinely feel your pain. What I'm wondering about, and what so many people are wondering about, is whether your response is moral and intelligent. So, for instance, let me put this question to you. If you get rid of Hamas, if you get rid of it, what's the plan for the other splinter groups in Gaza and indeed in the West Bank? Because you've got Islamic Jihad, you've got the Democratic Front for the Liberation of Palestine, you've got the Al-Aqsa Martyrs Brigades, you've got the Popular Resistance Committees, you've got the Jihad Jibril Brigades, and goodness knows how many others that might step into the breach if and when Hamas is actually eliminated. Because ultimately, it's not just a bunch of fighters and extremists and terrorists, it is also an idea. And you can't kill the idea so easily. We know that we're fighting the most moral fight imaginable, and that is a fight to bring our people home to safety and to bring their tormentors to justice. That has been the mission statement of the state of Israel ever since we reclaimed our sovereignty here out of the ashes of the Holocaust. We know there is nothing more moral than to destroy the army of terror that is threatening our people with annihilation. Now, as for the day after, we have been saying there are three principles that need to be in place to prevent a relapse into violence. The first is demilitarization. The Gaza Strip will have to be demilitarized. Just now I saw footage of a plane landing at Ben Gurion Airport as missiles fly overhead in the distance. No country in the world would tolerate that threat to its people, including the countries that voted to keep Hamas in power yesterday at the United Nations. And we're done. Well, hang on a minute. They didn't vote to, to keep Hamas in power. What they voted for was a ceasefire. Let's get that straight. There is a difference there. Indeed. And saying that we should not end this war with the end of Hamas but we should freeze the conflict with Hamas still in power, is saying that the rapists who burned, beheaded and tortured people on okay. October 7th should remain in power. That Let is the meaning of what 13 nations voted on and what the United Kingdom abstained on. It may be the consequence of it, but it's not the meaning of the vote. It wasn't the intention of the vote. Let me ask you this. If the that Americans... Is absolutely... No, sorry, Matt. I want to, to point this out. That is absolutely the intention of the vote, because when you vote for a ceasefire and you vote to freeze the status quo, you are voting to keep the army mm. of terror that perpetrated the October 7th massacre in place and still standing. And that but it is also happen. possible that, you know, the people of Gaza, you know, who are, and not everyone there is a Hamas supporter, they might want to get rid of Hamas that visited, that, that triggered the thing that led to the destruction. They're not, you're Indeed. not even giving them a chance to get rid of Hamas because you're, you're keeping them in a perpetual state of war. Matt, it's been 16 years. I think if any of them had wanted to overthrow Hamas and there had been a serious opportunity to overthrow Hamas in that time, it would have happened. But I hope you're also seeing the videos that are emerging from Gaza mm -hmm. of Gazans who are beginning to speak freely, speaking freely about how yeah. Hamas has been requisitioning aid that was supposed to go to civilians, how Hamas has been hiding and fighting from inside but, civilian and areas. I'm and seeing those same videos, but you're stifling those voices with your constant bombardment, aren't you? No, those voices are beginning to come out now that Hamas's grip on the Gaza Strip is beginning to loosen. We hope and expect that the day after Hamas, when we bring security for the people of Israel, we will also bring new opportunities for Palestinians in the Gaza Strip who realize that terrorism is a dead end. And then in the last 16 years of Hamas rule, as they diverted concrete that was meant to go to people's homes and built those tunnels under the Shifa hospital, built those mm. tunnels under the schools and mosques. The people of Gaza know that right. the corrupt Hamas regime has brought them nothing okay. but misery. A few more brief ones. A few more brief ones. What is the point of bombing tens of thousands of civilian homes, apartment blocks? What is the point? What's the point of bombing mosques? You know, and... and turning hospitals into battlefields. Does that advance your military purpose? Matt, you know that Hamas operates from within mosques, within schools and within hospitals. This is Hamas's MO. 
Its soldiers dress up as civilians, and then they fight inside civilian facilities. Just yesterday, our soldiers found a tunnel. So that means that every civilian building is 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 fair game. You flatten it because it ha no, had an association we are targeting, with Hamas. We are targeting Hamas infrastructure on the basis of precise intelligence. And this, as we're our talking soldiers about 100,000 buildings here, you know, 50 percent of I'm the housing stock is gone. These are not all Hamas Matt, buildings. <laughs> Hamas has spent the last 16 years. 16 years pursuing yeah. a deliberate strategy of embedding itself under civilian areas. And does that mean and that, that every civilian area is fair game? That This is the question. Does that mean well, that I'm every civilian area examples. and the civilians who live there are fair game because of Hamas? Every Hamas infrastructure is fair game, and we're doing everything we can to get civilians out of harm's way. At the Al-Azhar Al University, for example, in Gaza, we discovered a tunnel yesterday in the quad, in the yard, and we found that that tunnel led a kilometer away to a mosque. We found during close quarter fighting as well, these aren't aerial bombardments, our soldiers are going door to door in close quarter mm. fighting with Hamas terrorists. They found a tunnel inside a classroom. This is the reality that we are dealing with of a brutal army of terror that dresses up as civilians and deliberately fights from inside schools, mosques and hospitals because they think that then they can retreat behind that civilian infrastructure yeah. and evade justice. Okay. And after the October 7th massacre, we are saying enough is enough. We will topple the Hamas rapist and terror regime. We will restore security for Israel and we will give opportunities for those Gazans who realize that the ideology of terrorism and violence against Israel is a dead end and will only ever bring misery. Okay, two more brief ones, if I may, because we've gone massively over time, but it's important to hear this. Uh, Why have the Israelis the world, chosen right? Al Mawasi, that tiny little enclave uh, that looks like a sandpit next to the Mediterranean? Why have they chosen that as the only safe space for, for 2.3 million Gazans to cram into? Because that is an area where Hamas has not already embedded itself under civilian infrastructure. Because in all other urban areas, including the urban areas to which international aid agencies have irresponsibly been directing civilians, Hamas is already hiding under schools. But hang on a minute, and and Al, Al Mawasi is the size of Heathrow Airport. Do you think that 2.3 million civilians can survive in a sand pit the size of Heathrow Airport without causing a we major humanitarian catastrophe? We would like to see international agencies begin to move civilians into the humanitarian zone. And to the extent they do so, we will, of course, consider other options and other safe zones that may be designated. And Matt, it is outrageous that Hamas has decided to start shooting rockets from inside the humanitarian zone. Mm. On Thursday, we had a barrage of 12 rockets okay. towards the city of Beersheba, fired from inside the humanitarian mm. zone, which just tells you... And of course, you, and they the do carry on firing Israel, these rockets. I, and I can just com yeah, go, finish the sentence. Quickly. The extent to which Israel is going to try to get civilians out of harm's way to the only places where Hamas isn't operating and then Hamas is mm. operating from those areas to double down on its okay. sick human shield strategy. All right. And finally, uh, Elon, uh, the Americans have said that, you know, you've got another month of this and they've indicated that if you don't stop what you're doing now soon, they will, they will tell you to stop. If they tell you to stop, will you listen? On the contrary, Matt, the latest statements we've seen from President Biden, Kamala, from uh, Vice President Harris, from Secretary of State Blinken, from John Kirby, from the State Department, mm. have been that the United States sees eye to eye to us that this war must I, end with we, the end of Hamas. They've been consistent about We must be looking at different statements because the they've also said, that, I mean, you know, we know, and you might know as well, I mean, I've been speaking to people in Washington, they're frankly panicking. They're panicking that you're going to lose them the next election if you carry on like this, amongst many other things. So if they tell you to stop, will you stop? This war is going to end with the end of Hamas, as the United States has been saying consistently from the very beginning. And that's why yesterday it showed that tremendous moral leadership in standing up to the United Nations resolution that would have sought to end this conflict mm. by leaving Hamas in power and calling it even. We know the United States stands shoulder to shoulder with us that this war must end with the end of Hamas mm. because you can't just massacre 1,200 people in the deadliest massacre of Jews since the Holocaust and get away with it. But can you massacre 15,000 civilians and not even take out Hamas militarily? Matt, that is an outrageous accusation. We are targeting Hamas and we have but gone you're further killing, than you're the, killing civilians in huge further, numbers. We to have them, that sounds like, that feels like massacre to them. It may not feel we like have, it to you, but it feels like that to them. 
We are doing everything we can, going further than your country did in previous wars, to get civilians out of harm's way. And we hold Hamas squarely responsible for launching this infernal war in the first place and for fighting this war from inside urban areas. It is trying to stop being evacuated because its whole strategy mm. is based on trying to create as much misery as possible because it knows it will gain sympathy from people like you and other media. And that will put diplomatic pressure on Israel to stop defending its people from an army of terror that is threatening us with another October 7th massacre over and over again.